have to get to the princess by nine o'clock. But you still don't, don't have an ending. Merry, merry Christmas to one and all. enough. Thanks. So, if you want to know the story behind one of the greatest novels sold in history, A Christmas Carol was created, this is just a movie for you. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the man who invented Christmas. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Become one of my subscribers. Also, click that bell so you'll be notified when I make uploads. And also, give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, the man who invented Christmas. I will be honest with you. Um, this is not a movie that I was looking forward to. Um, it's It wasn't on my radar. I knew that it was coming out. But... You know, I didn't want to be biased. I just wanted to go see the movie and, you know, try to see as many movies as I can. You know, that's what I try to do. I try to keep an open mind and also see as many movies as I can. And I will say I'm not going to tell you how much I liked or disliked the film now, but I will just say that I like the film for now. You'll get my full interpretation towards the end of the review. But I, I do want to give uh, if I really like a film, I definitely want to give uh, people that were involved credit the director of this film is named Bharat Nauri or Nauri. If I'm so sorry that I am mispronouncing your name, I've never heard of this man before. And when I look at his filmography on uh, IMDb, he has been attached to a lot of TV movies and uh, episodic TV shows. Uh, Miss Pedigree lives for a day that came out in 2008. That seems somewhat familiar to me, but. Um, you know, I've never heard of this director before, but he did a fine job. Of course, uh, we have Dan Stevens, who is playing uh, Charles Dickens. And Dan Stevens is he was the beast in Beauty and the Beast that came out earlier this year or last year. I, I think it was earlier this year, like in March. And also we have Ebenezer Scrooge in this movie as well, played by Christopher Plummer. And it's funny because when I was watching the movie, the makeup was uh, something that they did a great job. I was thinking the whole time that Christopher Plummer was Ian McKellen, the guy that plays Magneto in the uh, X-Men movies or whatever but you know when i came home and i was looking up a few things i was like oh snap there wasn't ian mckellen that was christopher Plummer, or whatever so i felt a little uh silly there and if you don't know who christopher Plummer is uh let me try to find uh he was in up he was in nine as a voice actor um he was in star uh, you know another movie that came out a couple of weeks ago no, not not a couple of weeks ago but a week ago but christopher Plummer has been in a number of things uh, the tempest priest you know, I'm, I'm not going to read down his whole filmography or whatever. But and so we have Christopher Plummer as Ebenezer Scrooge and Dan Stevens as Charles Dickens. And just a brief summary, if you don't know who Charles Dickens is, he's an, he's a writer that was real prominent in the 19th century. Um, you know, 1843 is when he published and wrote the novel A Christmas Story. And that is one of the most popular novels of all time. It sold a, a ton of books. And, you know, what that is about is it is, you know, uh, it's about Christmas and the Christmas story. And, you know, the ghost from the past, present and the future. And, you know, you learn lessons and all that good stuff. And it was just truly inspiring. And that story is just told over and over and over again. And just getting into the film, the film does not focus on the story necessarily as a whole, but it focuses on how the story was made. And Christopher uh, and Charles Dickens, his crazy imagination and how he re used real life inspirations to create characters and put them on the page or whatnot. And they do cover the story itself just a little bit, but that is not the forefront of the movie. It is just a process of how the story was made itself. And like I said, this takes place in 1843. And something that I do, um, something that I did not like about it. Uh, early on and this is pretty much my only gripe is like the first 20 minutes of the film when they're trying to set up the world for you and set up the characters and all that good stuff and kind of just let you know who Charles Dickens is or, or who he was and just kind of like the lifestyle that he was living back in that time um, the first 20 minutes of this movie I did not like uh, pretty much at all um, I was very bored you know I was not able to attach myself to the characters I really did not care for the story at all 
Um, I was just like, man, this is a two hour movie and we're only in 20 minutes. This is going to be a painful watch. It's going to be a painful viewing, you know, but I'm going to try to, you know, pay attention and stick to it. And, you know, honestly, for those first 20 minutes, I could not wait to get home. But uh, shortly after that, of course, when Charles Dickens is just going through his normal life or whatever, he comes upon a, a burial ground, a cemetery, or I guess you can say a funeral. And he meets somebody um, in this graveyard at this cemetery at this funeral that their partner just passed away. And the partner didn't care. The guy didn't care about his partner. He just cared about that money. And this was the birth of Ebenezer Scrooge. And I won't say more because I don't want to spoil it for you. But that is where he first got the idea of Ebenezer Scrooge. And we all know who Ebenezer Scrooge is. And I will say that when Ebenezer Scrooge or his imagination came to fruition, when it came to light, that is when the film picked up. And that's when it got good and got better and better and better all the way to the end, turning into a film that I thoroughly enjoyed. And what I love most about this movie, and how I did say love because I did love this movie. What I loved about this movie is just the way that they told the story and the process of the writing of the film itself and the process of writing of Charles Dickens of how he put his life experiences on the page. That was brilliant and I loved it. It was very creative and it was something that I've never seen before because he... um, I don't want to say that Charles Dickens was peculiar, but he had just a a nice, fine set of rules to where when he's in his room locked up and writing, he does not want to be interrupted because once he gets into his mode, once he gets into the zone, he is like focused and he's like pacing back and forth throughout his room and he's doing this and like trying to act out the characters and act out silly or whatever. You know, he's feeling himself in a good way. And I like that, you know, because he's a very passionate writer and it was just also entertaining as an audience member just seeing Seeing him, you know, uh, try to bring these characters to life, you know, through random mannerisms and just kind of acting silly in his office. But every once in a while, he would be interrupted in his office working with somebody would be knocking on the door and he would just go over there frustrated, just like, oh, gosh, you know, what are you doing? You know, uh, you're, you're bothering me. You're working or he would hear somebody down the street or across the street or uh, in a different section of the house or whatever. And when he was interrupted, it was just it was, he was got really ticked off. And that was just kind of funny to see, um, you know, on screen or whatever. Now, as far as, you know, his uh, his writing process and how they brought that to life or whatever, like he really did bring the characters to life with his mind. And they popped up on screen to where it didn't even seem like it was his imagination. It seemed like the characters that he was writing in the book were really there. You know, and he was part of the story and also the story was a part of him and the way that he would bounce back and forth between real life and his imagination and those characters. It was it was remarkable. It was breathtaking. It was high quality entertainment, like I said, which I just thoroughly enjoy. And it was just very funny, too. And um, just a little bit more about his backstory is, you know, there was a number of flashbacks for uh, that dealt with him as a little boy. And we really got to see where he came from and why he is the man that he is today. And uh, he has a chip on his shoulder, but I don't blame him for having a chip on his shoulder. I mean, he kind of got dealt a crappy hand as a young child and he just really made the best out of it. And, you know, he complained here and there. But, you know, like I said, I did not blame him. You know, like he was forced to be working 12 hour days when he was like 10 or 11 years old. So, I mean, when you grow up and you have to really be the man of the house at 11 years old and pull yourself up by the bootstraps. And, you know, we hear a lot of that today or whatever. You're going to be pretty frustrated, especially when you still have to look out for your father to where you feel like has not been responsible at all throughout your child life and even adult life. I mean, he bought his father a house. He gives him an allowance, you know, but his father still is able to his father still just does not live up to his expectations. And those expectations that he has in place is is fair because he's just done so much for his family. And, you know, he's just being pulled left and right here and there or whatever. And he just needs a break or whatever, you know, and he and, you know, he lets it out in his writing or whatever. And, you know, those exchanges, especially between him and his father, that was great, too. I love the acting and all these scenes and the, the relationship that he had with his father. It spoke volumes. And it's just another reason why I really did enjoy this movie. And, um, you know, sometimes when he's in this writing process, you know, he turns into the characters themselves. And unfortunately, he 
dishes that behavior out until his loved ones to where one scene his wife was just letting him have it like look you're a two people sometimes you're nice you're caring and you're considerate but sometimes you're just somebody that's cold and calculating that i don't want to that i don't know and you're not allowing me to get to know you know but at the same time you know his wife is checking him and you know i just like the way they you know illustrated his character because you know he will look in the mirror and try to self-reflect and correct his behavior you know, so that's just another, you know, I mean, I've, of course, I've heard of Charles Dickens before coming up, but I, I have a, a new uh, look on life as far as he's concerned, um, you know, as his, as himself. And it just it shed a lot of light on it as well. As far as the effects are concerned, there's not many effects. Um, you know, this is a period piece, but the way they were able to showcase the ghosts, the ghosts from the past, the present and the future or what's to come. Is, is in the Christmas season. I like how they did that. It was very nice. They uh, took full advantage of the score that um, to bring these moments to life and just give it, you know, more interest. Uh, one character, one ghost or whatever. They just you. They just put a certain light on him or whatever, and that was just great. I mean, it was simple, but it worked. You know, and, and you all you've always heard that sometimes less is more, and this is a prime example of that. How it worked to uh, its full uh, advantage, its full ability or whatever. And so, and these are just instances where you know you get to know the story of the Christmas story, which you already know and stuff. And I think the last time I uh, saw something about the Christmas story, it was that James uh, Jim Carrey movie, which was not good. But this one is like far superior than that. And, um, you know, I, again, I just really enjoyed it. I love the characters like when he's in that room writing or whatever. And these characters are coming to life and he's like re having full fledged conversations with him. It's just something about it that just really pulled me into the screen and just got me on board, you know. And when he's in the room writing or when he when he has writer's block or whatever, that was entertaining as well. And when he's out with his other friend just talking in like a, a cavern or a bar or restaurant or whatever, you know, they did something with the score to where he's talking to his friend trying to um express how frustrated he is with writing block but he's also able to write and come up with ideas and i caught myself like leaning in like because i was so interested just leaning in more and more and more as he's developing the story on 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 the spot or whatever then when somebody will like either knock on the door or come interrupt their conversation i was getting as frustrated as he would be or whatever I, you know i was like oh damn it or whatever i was so into this or whatever like how he's writing this story and these characters or whatever, making this story, the Christmas story come true. And, uh, you know, that's just a true testament on just how great it is and how driven he was or whatever, because it, it was just a nice thing for the audience member to, you know, and witness, you know, as we're sitting in a the theater watching it or whatever. There's also it's also a race against time because, you know, he has a deadline that he has to meet. And um, like I said, guys, I really didn't enjoy the first 20 minutes. But right when Ebenezer Scrooge came on board or whatever, and of course, you know, he's he's learning from the characters. The characters are learning from him. And when Ebenezer Scrooge comes on board, that's when the film just picks up. And like I said, it just gets better and better and better all the way to the very end. The ending did kind of linger on. I sometimes complain when sometimes stories have multiple endings. I won't say that this film had multiple endings, but the ending did linger on just a little bit longer than it should. But that's just not a gripe. Uh, too much whatever but towards the end of this film people were crying in the theater uh i, I was hearing it ever <laughs> you know all, all over the place you know i didn't cry myself uh but if you cry there is there is nothing wrong with that um so really the only thing that i really just did not care for in the uh in this film is just like the first 20 minutes because it was hard for me to get on board but other than that i thought this film was fantastic and if it wasn't for that first uh, 20 minutes i would give this a higher rating but as far as my rating is concerned if i were to rate um the man who invented christmas out of a one out of ten i would give this an 8.5 out of 10 yes an 8.5 out of 10 but guys that is just my opinion have you seen the man who invented christmas or do you want to see it have i turned you on have i turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can also click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And also, guys, go to my website. Check me out there, bookmark it. I do have written reviews, justmyopinion.net. I would really appreciate it. Also, guys, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen and I made it very easy for you guys by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my pan slash review for the man who invented Christmas. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brennan Keith Avery and that's just my opinion. Peace.